Pika, what did you do to our movie? It's the 31 days of Halloween. Welcome back. <laughs> it's day 20, and uh, we are wrapping up our, our mini-series within the series on vampires with um, 1996s from Dusk Till Dawn. Yes. And uh, I put the movie back into my player. It's my, my old PS4. Love it. Um, and it's not playing. I watched it just the other night. Well, for the first time, too. This specific copy. This happened with my, uh, my, my box set of Sopranos. It won't play anymore. It says unrecognizable disc. I mean, I know what happened there. I left that disc in there for, for like a couple of months and it just like maybe got sick of it. The forget about it. And uh, what's the matter, you? And hey, the Struyadel, what are you, crazy? Stuff like that, you know? Um, so <laughs> we are wrapping up our vampire series. Uh, we're doing the 31 Days of Halloween. We're watching a different horror movie every day in the month of October. It's been a great ride. Mm hmm. We've got two left. Today's 1996 is Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino's From Dusk Till Dawn. And tomorrow we're doing 1992's uh, the original movie, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And that's going to wrap up our mini series with uh, Dracula. I mean, with, with vampires. If you have any vampire questions, leave them in the comments section. I'll see if I can answer them. I got a pretty good knowledge about uh, vampires. And uh, if not, I'll look it up and we can have further conversation. Uh, I'm playing the, uh, the trailer on slow from, uh, from YouTube. I'll switch it to another trailer just for the background. I wasn't even going to play this movie at 10 times speed. This is rated R. It's full of T and, T and A, tits and ass. And, and even a, um, a, a, a phallic gun, a revolver. This is a really good movie. It's a good synthesis of CGI and practical horror effects. Uh, this has a really good cast. It was written by Quentin Tarantino, and it was all. But the, here's the the rub, though. It was written as a um, as a uh, they call it a spec. Uh, you know, it was its development from. I'm reading this from the wiki, of course. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn was conceived by Robert Kurtzman. Uh, he's a, uh, you know, a big Hollywood man who hired, uh, Tarantino to write the script as his first paid writing assignment. Universal Pictures originally considered Tarantino's screenplay for From Dust Till Dawn as the follow-up to Demon Knight and the second in a proposed Tales from the Crypt film trilogy, but ultimately another vampire film, Bordello of Blood, instead. And yeah, that's, uh... The money shot here, or one of the others. You've got Salma Hayek in the background. You've got Quentin Tarantino in their very expensive lead, uh, or he might have been, George Clooney. In 1995, George Clooney was a, was just beginning beginning his ascent up to the paramount of that of that mountain of, of, of celebrity. And um, he'll be Batman in a few years. You know, he's on a TV show called E.R., where he's like the, the hunky doctor. You know, it was like a 10 p.m. Thursday night NBC must-see TV. ER was huge. Thursday night, you had friends, you had cheers, you had ER. You did. But from Dust Till Dawn, this is really interesting because Quentin Tarantino wrote the screenplay and Robert Rodriguez directed it. Robert Rodriguez, you'll know from El Mariachi... Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Spy Kids, um, uh, Alita, Battle Angel, anyone, um, The Book of Boba Fett, he did a couple of episodes of Mandalorian, he's really good at his action movies. And I want to say, this is why I, I am a proud, Lat I'm a proud Slantino, a Slantino is uh, those of the members and the, uh, the contributors to uh, Polly's The Latino Slant YouTube station, I'll leave his link. In the description, I, he loves movies. He loves pop culture, and he, especially if it, there is a Latino slant to it. And this is most definitely a Latino vampire movie. Seriously, it's set in Mexico, and so it's 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 pulling from this the world myth of vampires. Remember, 
every culture seems to have their own vampire myth and they're not connected they weren't connected before this age of uh, colonialism and, and the information age either but um so they're the I love the last shot. We're coming away from the strip bar that has been the our our, our centerpiece for Acts two and three, the entire House of Horror, and it's actually the the topmost part of the of an excavated ancient Mesoamerican pyramid, where blood sacrifice would happen. You know, where you could imagine that it's great because it's just I don't know the rest of the story. There is literally two more movies. Um, it, it inspired two sequels that were not written by Tarantino and not directed by Rodriguez and it spawned a TV show as well a TV series and uh, yeah the soundtrack for this was really good you had a lot of original um, ZZ Top music and the Chicano rock band Tito and Tarantula which also they play the house band who are vampires and the guy's bass turns into a to a to a to a fresh corpse it's 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 great visuals so it has this really outstanding ensemble cast we're gonna back up and we're gonna go there and we might even hit the preview oh boy youtube ads that's fine i wonder if i'll get a copyright strike from a youtube ad you know, because things are so... I'm really picky about what I use. I'm talking about media, and I'm talking about specific movies. Now, where do... Like, you know, I bought this. This is my DVD copy of this movie. And I'm enjoying having a moment talking about this, where we're celebrating the 20th day of Halloween with another horror movie. And today's horror movie is... It's 1996's From Dust Till Dawn. And... I mean, so hopefully this, you know, I'm on YouTube, they're on YouTube. Hopefully it's all on the up and up. You know what I mean? But there's just, it's a great, because for Act 1, you don't know what's going on. I remember seeing this initially, and I don't know if I knew what was going on. I just knew it was this jam between QT and Robert Rodriguez. Two, two, act, uh, two directors and writers that I really were into. I love Pulp Fiction. I love Reservoir Dogs. I loved El Mariachi. I loved Desperado. And this was like both, they were on the, they too were on their ascent to their peaks and um, on, on, the, on their paramounts, no movie pun there, um, on their mountains, you know, they, uh, they're still there on top, Clooney, Tarantino, Rodriguez. And we have in here Harvey Keitel, We've got um, Juliette Lewis, great role. She, she was a very, very, she, she was a hot commodity at that time. And um, also, two of the, uh, the, the heroes slash victims, it's all full of victims. I mean, only two of our heroes walk out of this. We have a, a band of people that trapped in this uh, after hours from dusk till dawn at the Titty Twister. We have the vampires come you know come to being and they feed on these uh these hapless bikers and truckers yeah it's 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 really really cool it's like the interior um it's, it's one part haunted house and it's a it's a de it's a literal nest of vampires and it uses the the the, the inherent latent sexuality of vampires but it's about sexy and about maybe how sex turns ugly and how sex can be rather uh, not that pleasant or maybe see there's a lot to unpack with vampires there really is if there's something there's this from ancient it's a mythic it's it's it, it's magical it's demonic um it, it it's it's um and vampires seems like such a you know either you're a willing you're you're a willing thrall or you're an unwilling victim. And so there's there's a subtext of what we call today consent. I would call that capital C, consent. There are real baked in to this recipe of vampire ideas of what we know today as consent in the, 20, in the early 21st century. And that it doesn't matter if the vampire is male or female. The vampire has power 
The vampire has thirst and hunger. The vampire also has allure and power to share. And it's just, there's a, I just, this was a really interesting movie. Cheech Marin's in this. He plays three different roles. He really does. Uh, who else is in this? Oh, yeah. Uh, Fred, Fred Williamson um, is in this. And also, sci uh, science fiction, or, I mean, um, special effects legend Tom Savini. He is also a director, and he is also a master of practical makeup and spe special effects. And he plays this juicy role as Sex Machine. That's his name, is Sex Machine. <laughs> a leather biker. Uh, and he has the famous... Robert Rodriguez prop that he's had since El Mariachi and may have been shown in, uh, was it shown in Desperado as well? Lending a conceptual continuity to his films. But the codpiece revolver, it's, uh, the, it uh, reveals itself, it's, a, it's like a leather gherkin and it pops up and behind it is a pistol with two revolvers looking very phallic. <laughs> it's very suggestive. It's supposed to be. It really is. And, um, oh, wow, what a what great casting. And to have this, Tom Savini is a legend, serious legend. You should look him up, you know, watch some of his movies, enjoy his craftsmanship. I mean, and then, and speaking once again about conceptual continuity, um, I don't recall them smoking cigarettes or what brand it was, because uh, I thought they were, and I thought they were red apple cigarettes. How does that matter? Those are the brand of cigarettes in Quentin Tarantino's movies. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, even even um, Hateful Eight. And, um, but there's Big Kahuna Burger. Big Kahuna Burger was profiled in that famous scene in Pulp Fiction. All right? You know what I'm talking about. Ah, Big Kahuna Burger. You know? <laughs> we happy, Vince? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know the scene. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I got Legos. <laughs> Ain't that cool? I used an old Joker. I thought that was appropriate. <laughs> it's like Batman's final revenge. He sends Marcellus Wallace's hitman out to Joker. Don't worry. The Joker gets away. It's just all... these. Are, those are just toys. I have other... This is the good and the bad and the ugly. Ain't that cool? Look at that. Can we get a, can we get a focus? What would Robert Rodriguez do? He would hire non-union cameramen, as he did on this movie, and he saved a bundle. It was very practical. He was a Robert Rodriguez is, is a very practical movie maker. His book um, Rebel Without a Crew actually contributed to me being a YouTuber twenty five years after I read it. It's because he talks about cameras, setups, blocking. Your background and making sure you're, you know, you have a setup. You're going to make a shot, make it count, have it visualized, you know, and uh, and execute it. Indeed. All righty. Let's just go back to this one real quick. And uh, another ad. Oh, good. Oh, it's a Miramax film. Yeah, it was. And uh, so were a lot of Kevin Smith movies. And so this was the mid 90s when you had this independent movie flair. And these were the young guns, the young Turks that were up and coming and uh, who are still major players in storytelling and in movies today, 30, almost 30 years after. Seriously. But uh, but yeah, I love talking about movies and I loved watching this movie. This movie was really good to watch. It was exciting. There were, there were no wasted story beats in this show. Um, it is, um, yeah... 107 minutes of running time and that's great three succinct acts it's it's wonderful sturdy structure it's a great you think, wow it's you know what's going on there's a you know act one has totally nothing to do with vampires it's all set up to pay off at the end of the movie or enduring it like who deserves who what do we really deserve when it comes to vampires is it about just desserts no, it's all about this happenstance of being in a, a literal uh, slaughterhouse. But you're not the apex predator. And it, so, yeah, there's just a really stylish, great special effects, great stunts, great choreography, 
great shooting, great, uh, you know, this is, this is a really top-notch modern vampire movie. One of the last great vampire movies of the 20th century in a century full of vampire movies. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Today is the 20th day of Halloween, and we have done, we are watching From Dust Till Dawn, the Quentin Tarantino written, Robert Rodriguez directed, oh, gore and splatter fest. It's over the top violent. Um, and it's pretty darn fun. And that's what matters. It's pure escapism. It really is. And uh, that's my suggestion. And then what I'm watching tonight for my uh, for my my horror movie in the 31 days of Halloween. Thank you so much for tuning in today. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. Keep your rosary handy. Keep some garlic, a wooden steak, some silver bullets, you know, um, I mean, yeah, super soaker filled with holy water like they do in this movie. Or <laughs> actually, I think the kid filled it up full of uh, um, a high proof alcohol and then try to set the vampires on fire. <laughs> this was pretty, it was pretty inventive. Um, you know, by act three, you know, the, the survivors and they're cobbling together an arsenal out of what's available. <laughs> and it's, it's great because it's this whole legacy of also survival horror video games like Resident Evil that, you know, throw you in this same kind of situation. So uh, I was very pleased with this movie. It was good to see this one again. This is going to go great. I have both a huge... I got every Quentin Tarantino movie and uh, mostly every Robert Rodriguez movie. He's done a few movies that I'm not too you know, fond of. Uh, but you know what? It's going to make a great addition on my shelf. And uh, from my shelf, respecting my physical media and my physical media collection, we're doing this the, pokes, the post-geek singularity way, celebrating a deliciously Latinos vampire movie. Los Vampiros Latinos, aquí. La yeah, and uh, like and subscribe, and uh, check out Polly the Latino Slant. Check out his channel, too. Give him a subscribe. Uh, he's got a great channel full of culture, music, poetry, movies, TV show, pop culture, and it's all told from his Latino slant, from his Latino point of view, his lens. And, uh, viva, orale, muchismas, and thank you very much for tuning in today. This has been the 20th day of the 31 days of Halloween from Dust Till Dawn. Check it out. Hopefully, you if you've never seen this, you have been warned. Have a good one. Cheers. We'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye-bye.